yes yes and yes good morning to you and i believe that you are just fine we are sharing truth this morning on sustain your quiet times and this is coming from genesis 46 the entire chapter you are warmly welcome to the really really knowing god channel i am pastor larry adeneko channel is packaged to inform and inspire you into a real knowledge of god richer knowledge of god everything being empowered by the pastor larry adeneko center for age inspiration the place This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus. If you are done with spiritual chocolates and now you want a balanced diet, this is the place to be. Let us pray. A gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you and do so all the time, for you are really good. Your mercies endure forever. We go on to share with your people this morning. We receive help from you as always in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And grant also God that will not be here as alone, but do us also of your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 46 1. So Israel took his journey with all that he had, and he came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. Then God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, Here I am. I am, I am God, the God of your father. Do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make you a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. And Jacob arose from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob, their little ones, their wives, their cats, in the carts, which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. So he took their livestock and their goods, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to Egypt. Jacob and all his descendants with him. His sons, his sons, sons, daughters, daughters, sons, daughters, his descendants, he brought with him to Egypt. And now these were the names of the children of Israel, Jacob and his sons who went to Egypt. Reuben was his firstborn, and the sons of Reuben and all the sons of, uh, you know, the genealogy went on and on and on. Um, 19, the sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, were Joseph and Benjamin. Um, Joseph were born. Uh, in the land of Egypt, Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asana, daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bore to him, uh, the sons of all the rest of them. Verse 28, and then he sent Judah before him to Joseph to point out before him the way to Goshen. And they came to the land of Goshen. So Joseph, Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father. And he prepared himself to join him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face because you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and to his household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and say to him, My brothers and those of my father, that's why the land of Canaan have come to me. And these men are shepherds for the occupations have been to feed livestock and they have brought their their flocks and herds and all they have so it shall be when pharaoh calls you and says what is your occupation you shall say your servants occupation have been in livestock from youth even to now both we and our and our fathers that you may dwell in the land of goshen for every shepherd is an abomination to the egyptian maybe we stop and say a word or two here well it just gives an account but at the beginning of the chapter um he actually you know made up his mind okay i now believe you guys i'm going to see my son um and all that and he began to go while on the way he offered sacrifices to god the way they used to do at that point in time to the god of isaac his father you know who was now his own god as well and god spoke to him in the visions of the night um called him jacob jacob and said one or two things to him assuring him that as you go don't worry i'm going to prosper you and all but you see the first thing we noticed there was that Jacob made a sacrifice unto God when he got to that particular point. Um, Beersheba means the well of Sheba. And you remember that um, it was a place of a, of a previous encounter. So when he got there, he knew exactly what he was doing uh, because it was some form of a meeting place and he sacrificed unto God. And God also responded. My brethren, <clears throat> let me say this to us. Honestly, this kind of meeting place thing between god and you did you know that it is actually um just like our quiet time just like as we pray every morning or every night or both you know before you go, it's actually a form of meeting place between you and god i mean somebody was giving me a testimony some time ago that uh, you know things 
you know developed somehow and you know you used to hurry to work you used to forget you know you, you didn't really have time for quiet time you know and you just rush away and, and you know and things like that one day as you dropped you know from the stairs I was about to rush away again into he thought he had a voice you know from the chair where he used to um, sit down and have his own quiet time not in in the in the in the bedroom now that chair was somewhere um in the living room or just adjoining to the living room he would just sit down there and do his own personal devotion between himself and god and before he would leave he thought he had a voice talking from that place saying i thought we used to meet here every morning and from that he realized that look he had done wrong and he, he, he looked there he didn't see anybody there but he thought he had a voice saying something like that certainly the spirit of god was trying to remind him of something this meeting place thing between you and god it may matter a lot you know beersheba remember that place met and then he made a sacrifice unto god he knew that oh this was our old meeting place and he did something to god and god responded he was already on the way it was not as if god was doing it so that he could go it was already on the way but god thought it fit or deemed it fit to respond to what he did in offering a sacrifice unto god to give him further assurance or reassurance as the case may be but my point the point i'm making here is that look when you recognize a place as this is look god this is our meeting place or meeting time or meeting moment or meeting you know a period or whatever god also will respond accordingly because you are doing things faithfully in that direction praise the lord so he gave him solid promises you know and jacob got even further encouraged and then took on and went then we read plenty of uh, uh historical accounts if you like genealogy just giving us names and things like that and all the rest of it and then finally uh, when they got very very close he sent judah look go and tell uh, joseph we have arrived in the environment of vicinity if you like and uh, let him come and tell us exactly where he wants he wants us to go um i think that it's a little bit of culture but it's a little bit of strategy as well with uh, with um uh, Jacob now otherwise called Israel now he says okay we have reached that environment you go ahead and call in maybe they recognize you they know you you've been here before and anyway the, the man now got into his chariot and you know rode down very quickly to come and see his dad you know and they, you know, they fell on each other and all that and he told them his strategy I'm going to introduce you to Pharaoh uh, but when he says where would you like to stay say it so so and so and so and so because According to these people here, they really don't like shepherds. <laughs> Praise God. That's where we're going to end it this morning. But let's just share on that little bit. It is important to strategize. And when you are strategizing, bear in mind the circumstances, you know, of the environment in which you are, the climate of the place in which you are. I mean, social climate now. Of the, the, oh, well, all sorts of climate, not only social, okay, you know, of where you are and all, and strategize accordingly. Know what the times are saying, what, what the culture of the people where you are staying is important, and then plan your things in line with all the things, all the factors on ground, and strategize properly. Praise the Lord. So instead, you see, they were, uh, they were, um, cattle rearers they were into livestock farmers and all and it says that the egyptians never liked uh, you know life livestock livestock people so you say this they are going to be very very happy for you to stay you know somewhere very far away not in the capital or you know just somewhere in goshen where it will be okay for your own flock and then they are not they are not uh, they don't really mind you staying there because you are not mixing into them like that like that so you see it's strategic and it's good to, be, to, to think about that and in all that you do to uh, do things uh, in such a way that is going to work by the grace of God. Well, thank you for sharing time with us this morning. Let's leave it here and then uh, hopefully go into the next chapter again by the grace of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.